Well, before I share my perspectives on how China projects its power to Taiwan, uh, I would like to shed some light on the rationales behind the Chinese disruptive behaviors. In other words, uh, let's not only ask how, let's ask why. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, China became disruptive because its leaders perceived the world was changing rapidly in their favor. And they need to, uh, they need to ride the tailwind and take advantage of it. For China watchers, they must have noticed that, that after uh, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP's 19th Congress uh, in October 2017, Chinese leader Xi Jinping uh, started to describe the world as going through a uh, centennial sea change, quote unquote, in which the international order led by the West was increasingly untenable. For the CCP, uh, the centennial sea change was uh, favorable to China and there was a looming inclination in the West to live with autocratic tendencies. As we noted, Xi Jinping has cited Dong Seng Xi Jiang. The East is rising, the West falling on various occasions since 2017. How to seize the opportunities out of the centennial sea change has become the main theme of the PRC's foreign policy. Uh, they sincerely believe that uh, democracy was backsliding and um, uh, the West would be the underdog. Then, uh, then came the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, which occurred uh, in Wuhan, China, late uh, 2019. Uh, the pandemic did not mitigate China's ambition as some might have hoped. In fact, the initial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on China in 2020 was rather muted um, if compared to that in the rest of the world. And China appeared to have recovered from the pandemic earlier than elsewhere. While most countries were suffering the pandemic, China was the first in and first out. In fact, uh, Xi Jinping declared victory over the pandemic in as early as September 2020. He became so emboldened that uh, he introduced the zero COVID policy in summer 2021. China since seemed under control and moving in a fair world direction. But so-called uh, all good things come to an end, so to speak. 2022 turned out uh, to be a year of dissolution, not only for China, but also for Russia. Of course, for Russia, uh, the war in Ukraine did not see a quick ending. On the country, it garnered swift and strong responses from the Western countries. And as the war drags on, China is on the verge of changing its pro-Russian neutrality to much more blatant support for Putin. So in 2022, the zero COVID policy, which led to strict mobility restriction, became the main reason for China's economic slowdown and for its social unrest. To a first in, first out, China got hooked by holding on to its zero COVID policy. It was supposed to be a proof of China's superiority in its political system. A system their leaders genuinely believe that they can stop the virus to spray just by doing the right thing. Here only until that the Omicron variant proved unstoppable. So can China alter its disruptive behaviors? I'm not optimistic. Even though China today is facing great difficulties at home and abroad, I think that in a highly autocratic political system, a strong man leader cannot afford to admit mistake. As long as the CCP is in power, the system that views the West as hostile and a threat will keep pushing China to disrupt. So how about Taiwan? In terms of China's ability to disrupt, it has been displayed in various aspects. Let me just name a few. 
Firstly, uh, increasing intimidation. For example, the PLA's war plans intruding into the Southwest ADIZ, uh, the Air Defense Identification Zone of Taiwan, uh, that number has been increasing. According to Taiwan's Ministry of National Defense, there were 380 times of incursion in 2020, 960 times in 2021, and more than 1,700 times in 2022. Meanwhile, we have seen a steady rise of the incursions crossing the medium lines of the Taiwan Strait, aiming to change the status quo and to pose greater threat to Taiwan. Secondly, uh, gray zone tactics. China's cyber attack to Taiwan is part of its gray zone tactics. The use of non-military means to achieve political objectives. In addition to sabotage, the uh, cyber attack or uh, gray zone tactics also aims to do espionage, uh, data theft, and most importantly, to incite disorder. In Taiwan, this is happening on a daily basis alongside China's disinformation campaign and uh, cognitive warfare. Thirdly, nuclear arsenal. Of course, China is unlikely to use nuclear force to take Taiwan back. But the fact is China is rapidly increasing its nuclear arsenals. One U.S. estimate shows that by 2030, China will possess 1,000 nuclear warheads and likely use them to deter the U.S. from coming to Taiwan's rescue. So the current bipolar nuclear order is likely to shift to a tripolar game, making the world much more dangerous. All in all, the chance of China invading Taiwan has risen dramatically in recent years. In Japan, a poll shows a rise of 45% to 60% of respondents believing China will invade Taiwan. In Germany, a poll shows a rise from 22% to 45%. These figures are alarming. And overall, invasion of Taiwan will be too risky. So before China met up its mind, it is very likely that they would stage large-scale miniature exercises similar to or larger than the one after U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan last August. But as China ventures abroad, its domestic instability and social unrest may unfold, and its tension with the U.S. and its allies will escalate. And this is certainly not what Chinese leaders want to see. To conclude, one is racing against time to be better equipped to deter the Chinese aggression. We hope the like-minded countries, the Western countries, will scale up their efforts to help Taiwan. So we should bear in mind a lesson from the war in Ukraine, that is uh, deterrence is always cheaper than fighting a war. Thank you.